Welcome to Press Start Gaming. I'm your host, Jeff Stevens, and tonight I have with me Todd Harden. Fourth time's the charm. David Feldman. How's it going, guys? And Kevin Nelson. How's it going? Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. And just so you don't forget, we are a part of the Are We Not Entertained podcast network. You can find us at arewenotentertained.com. You can also like us on our Facebook page and our Twitter. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce the first topic. We didn't really do this on the first podcast. We kind of thought about this afterwards. Uh, but we're going to actually introduce our personal gaming history. I'm going to go last. Um, so, you know what? I'm going to pick at random. Uh, Kevin, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, so, quick gaming history of me. One of the first games I played was probably, a, I want to say either Star Wars on the PC. It was, like, really old. And it was really good. I can't remember which Star Wars game like it was. Like TIE Fighter? Yeah, no, uh, it might have been TIE Fighter. It should have been TIE Fighter. I think so. Um, oh. And then my, like, first real in-depth video game I played was probably uh, on the Sega Genesis NBA 1999, I want to say. If I'm not mistaken. Um, just played a lot. Uh, once we started owning consoles at home, my first console we owned was actually a PS2. Uh, parents really didn't believe in consoles at the time, so the first one we got was a PlayStation 2, and the first game I played on that was actually SOCOM. And that's when I got involved in the online video gaming. And then I got a Xbox Halo edition, and I played the heck out of Halo Combat Evolved for, gosh, forever. And then it just goes on to major titles since then, Call of Duty, Halo... Um, Grand Theft Auto, those types of cons- those types of games. I'm, those are my main games. Okay, and I'm going to ask you to list your favorite game from your personal game history. Um, I want to say personal game history. Halo Combat Evolved won the first original. Um, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Kevin. And Todd, why don't you go ahead next? Okay, um, my gaming experience started, I used to go over to my aunt's house during uh, the holidays, and they had a NES, and the first game I ever remember playing was one of the early Mega Mans, um, which obviously put me in a real uphill battle as far as actually being able to try and win, because as we all know, Mega Man games are stupid hard. Um, first console I ever owned was SNES. Uh, Donkey Kong Country was one of the first games I ever owned. Uh, I then evolved into a more uh, RPG player as I got older. Um, I suck at shooters, so I don't really play those often. Um, but, I mean, I'll, I'll play everything, but I usually play sports and RPGs. Uh, favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy X. Oh, that's an interesting one. Or, or eight, either one. Yeah, I, I'm surprised it's not seven. Everybody's a seven. Apparently. I never played seven. Yeah, uh, I can. I, we'll save seven for a topic. Let's put it that way. I uh, have a lot to say about it. Oh boy, <laughs> it might it might be in the next podcast. You never know. Okay, uh, so David, uh, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, sure. Um, so my gaming history is very, very extensive. I'm probably going to date myself a little bit here, but my first video game ever was actually Pac-Man on the arcade when I used to play it at Chuck E. Cheese as a, as a small child. Um, my first personal video game system was the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES. Um, we got it in Christmas, uh, I believe, 1989. And it was it came with a zapper, a gray zapper, um, the Mario Brothers cartridge, and Duck Hunt. And Duck Hunt was probably one of the funnest games ever. Um, I also actually, you know, had like I said, I have a pretty extensive gaming history. So handheld system was the Sega Game Gear. Um, it was probably the best system to ever have at that time. Mm-hmm. But it was horrible. It was so bad because it was a 3.2 inch screen and it took six AA batteries and it lasted maybe four hours. I feel like remember that. I feel like that console like killed the Earth faster than anything else. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. I can't even tell you how many AA batteries I went through. I think it cost uh, more to run it than it did to not keep it. 
But even then, I also had a TV turner with it, so I was sitting there watching TV in the middle of the night, and I would get yelled at at 1 o'clock in the morning, so it was good times. <laughs> um, my first computer was back in 1995 when I first started playing video games on the computer. Um, I had a Packard Bell B160. It was 133 megahertz. One uh, one point six gigs of RAM. They didn't even call it gigs, or, uh, not gigs. Sorry, thirty two megabytes of RAM. Nice. One point six gigabytes of hard drive space, and that was massive back then. Gigabytes. But yes, yep, megabytes. It was sixteen hundred megabytes. It wasn't even uh, shown as gigs yet. But I played. Uh, let's see, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Rise of Triad, Quake, Diablo One. Uh, Star Wars TIE Fighter, of course, Warcraft Orcs and Humans, you know, one of the many, many different games I've played. Interesting little uh, tidbit, too, is um, I played a game called William Shatner's Tech War, and um, despite the fact that it was probably one of the worst (laughs) games in history, it it also introduced me to William Shatner and then exposed me to Star Trek. Why is this such a terrible game? Oh my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> but um, that, that's a little bit that. of my history i've owned consoles since then many 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 consoles and gaming systems all right now you gotta pick a game embarrass yourself pick something stupid actually to be honest with you one of my favorite games of all time is sonic the hedgehog 2 oh you bastard the i'm 2. sorry but it okay. is a solid game they introduced those for the first time uh, once you got the Chaos Emeralds, you can go into supersonic mode. Uh, it was awesome. All right. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay. My personal gaming history uh, probably started when I got my Super Nintendo for the first time. Um, it was actually my brother's. He bought it, uh, but I played it because I was younger than him, so I got to play it whenever I wanted. Um First game we actually got with that was Super Mario World, which I still to this day have not beaten, but that's not important. It was still a really fun game. Um, And then we also got later on Star Fox, which if anybody knows me, my screen name is Star Fox 221. Um, So (laughs) obviously there's a lot of history there with that. Uh, But my next door neighbor, he actually had all of like the newer consoles, so he had the Sega Genesis, he had the N64, um, and so I would always like sneak over to his house and we would play games. I mean, he even had a, a PlayStation before I did, but um, sucks for him because we got the PlayStation 2 before he did, which was great. Um, and, you know, we played that, uh, bought myself a PlayStation 3, all the way up into PlayStation 4. Um, yeah. It's it's been fun, um, but I mean even even handheld consoles. I had the original Game Boy. Uh, I was obsessed with Pokemon. Not gonna lie, uh, I still am actually. I still play it from time to time. That was fun. Um, and kind of like David, I you know I played. I wouldn't say extensively on PC, just because I was too young. Uh, but you know Oregon Trail that was probably really fun with MS DOS. Um, I I probably have to say the original Star Fox was my favorite game. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I like I like the old Star Fox. I just saw a game theory about them how they don't have legs. Well, they don't. I mean, robot legs. Actually, it's funny because if you look on the the cover of the cartridge for Star Fox. They didn't they didn't like draw a cartoon for Star Fox. They literally made this like Star Fox costume that looks ridiculous. Right. It's awesome. It's terrifying too. Yeah it is. All all of those old puppet looking ones of them were freaking terrifying. So I guess we should actually do real topics now. Well, I do want to do a comment real quick. Uh, Oh, God. The first Oregon Trail came back was uh, actually on Apple II back in 1990, and I did play on that. Um, I could be wrong. I think it was even sooner than that, but that's the first one I played, and I even played it on the Macintosh. 
Yeah, on those gigantic floppy disks. Uh, Which, no. Coincidentally, no? kids have no idea what the fuck floppy disks are these days. No, that's true. You mean the save icon? Oh my yeah, God. that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, these weren't actually, these were the true floppies back then, and I, I misspoke there, Todd. It definitely was on those. It was the, was it the five and a quarter floppy yep. disks? Apparently, it originally came out in 1971. The uh, most common version that most people played was the 1990, the Oregon Trail Classic Edition for Macintosh, which I assume is what most elementary schools had back in the 90s. That's true. That's very yep. true. Apple <laughs> had a very good program with the elementary schools. Yep. Really makes me... Oh, they have it on iOS and Android, so I might buy that now. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, I'm just going to throw out the topic, because I don't remember who put it in there. But uh, Halo 5, which is coming out a uh, couple weeks, right? Next week? Uh, next uh, week after next. <sighs> yeah, I, I put this topic in. <sighs> and I already I hate you for it. Okay. Um... It, basically, it, it boils down to this. Are, are we done with Halo? Are you sick of it? Do you still enjoy it? What the hell does the story even mean anymore? What is this giant tentacle monster? I'm confused. Somebody fill me in. Well, okay, let, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. So, as, as we know, there's, there's three Halo games that were... Well, in, in the core trilogy... There's three As Halo games know. from Bungie, right? Sure. And then they decided, okay, we're kind of needing to get out of our contract with Microsoft, so they had to release two more Halo games. which ODST being, and Reach. ODST and Reach. And then they're like, bye, Microsoft, fuck you, we're going to go do our own thing. Um, and then kind of out of the ashes of all that, 343 Industries came about. And 343 Industries is actually founded by... Um, Frank O'Connor, I believe is his name, who is actually, he worked at Bungie. He was the guy that kind of pushed the Halo franchise forward. So I initially, I was really excited about it, um, which, you know, I'm sure you guys were too. But then Halo 4 came out, and I don't know. Who, who played Halo 4 first off? Actually, I did. Um, I'm a big Halo fan since it came out with the original trilogies, uh, trilogy. Sorry. Um, you no, know, you three, can call four, it three. trilogies. You can call it trilogies. That's fine. <laughs> but three four three Industries is actually named after three four three Guilty Spark, which is the character in the original Halo. So that nod to it sold me on the company. But um, the what you're talking about with Halo Four and the new one, Guardians, it's, it's part of what they call the Reclaimer series. So it's it's still keeping uh, John uh, one fifteen as the main character. One one seven. Oh yeah, you're right. I apologize. One one seven. I can't read my own handwriting. Uh, he's still the main character. So you know, but the real question comes down to is you know. How much more can we get out of them? It's not like they... I mean, they completely made, what, novels, anime, there's music, uh, you know... We've had a couple of movies now. There's movie... There's a full live-action movie coming out. Um, there's live-action like uh, web series. I, I mean, you know, I've read a couple of the novels. Uh, I think it was... Halo, Halo Reach, actually, before... Halo Reach, the game came out. They actually had a Reach book, and, you know, talked about the whole how uh, John became a Spartan and everything, and that was really interesting. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but um, I think Halo's done. I really do. I think it's done as a game. I I, I agree with you, Jeff. But as a, a mythos, as a universe, I think there's a lot more gold to be mined from that. Well, and that's a great point. I I. I believe that, um, honestly, with Halo 4, Master Chief should have just stayed on the ship. He should have literally just stayed on the ship. It should have been a completely different story, a uh, completely different universe, even if we could have, you know, or galaxy, rather, whatever. But I feel like, you know, they tried to, to, to take an existing formula and try to make it good. Um, Halo 4, for me, was all right. 
but then you know Halo Five is just kind of first off they they're doing away with uh, co op campaign mode like locally, which really pisses me off. Well, it's only been there since Halo One on which came out November fifteenth, two thousand one. Right, and and their excuse is is that they're saying, hey, uh, we, we're really trying to make this sixty frames per second. We're going to make it, you know, really slick and smooth. And to me, it's kind of like a slap in the face for like fans of the original series because uh, I mean, me and my girlfriend, uh, you know, I picked up the Halo collection. She had never played Halo really that often. She had played it a couple times, but you know, we went through the Halo collection. Um, we still haven't finished four yet, but we've made it all the way th- one through three. And, you know, we really enjoyed that experience. And as soon as I heard that five wasn't going to have that, that was instantly a uh, nail in the coffin for me. I, you know, I was just like, I, I can't support a game that's taking away features. I completely agree with you. Understandable. You know, it's really interesting, too, is that... Um... Going back to the original Halo, it was actually marketed very first back in 1999 by Steve Jobs. Um, he announced it at Macworld as a myth game that's taken place in uh, a sci-fi universe. So when Microsoft bought Bungie and they made it exclusive to Xbox, there was a lot of unhappy people about that from the get-go. Yeah, because Bungie had made uh, before that Marathon, and that was like a really big Mac game back in the day, and that was kind of a you know a slap in the face for the Mac crowd. Which you know back then you don't you don't really realize it, you know, because Bungie wasn't really that big compared to what they are now. Well, you know, there's not really much of a gaming community per se with the Mac people, but. Um... You know, they did enjoy what they had. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Um, But I mean, that's that's the major reason why I'm not buying Halo 5. Um, I'm actually kind of really upset with 343. Not not to mention that, you know, they promised, uh, you know, kind of an extension to the existing experience. You know, new Halo games... uh, the Master Chief Collection was supposed to be this really great like box set of all the games. And, um, who owns the Master Chief Collection? Pretty I much do. all of us, right? Yeah. I, I did at one point. It, oh, you had the discs version, right? Well, uh, I mean, but we all know how big of a fiasco that was. It hey, was, we got free ODST from it. <laughs> but, you know... Kind of, and you know they, you know they, they kind of backpedaled and said, "Oh yeah, well you know it's, we're basically running these games with wrappers. It wasn't really designed to be on the Xbox One." But to me, it's like, okay, they're giving us a subpar experience here. How are they going to make this new game not a subpar experience? Well, what do you? Okay, so, well let's let's just say that um, Halo Five is going to be a complete failure. Uh, you know, no one likes it. It's going to be bad. What do you think about the release of Halo Wars 2? Um, <sighs> meh. I, I never really played the first one. I did. I, I got did. it for free at some point. I actually oh. played full retail, just to let you know. Okay, so why did you do that, though? It's Halo, for one. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, actually and, very and true. Back back in uh, on the 360 when Halo Wars came out, it was it was Halo. Anything attached to Halo was hot. So of course I'm going to buy it. The fact that you can you know make more than one Spartan and it's not a third person shooter, it was a real time strategy game. Um, on the console, even though historically console RTS games aren't the best, I was like, whatever, it's on the console. I'll buy it. It's got Halo on it, and it was. Um, it was actually pretty good for an RTS on the console. Now, if you try to put it on the computer, uh, yeah, it'd probably score like a 65 on the meta scale. Well, okay, so that you bring up an interesting point about RTS games. Um, so that's actually... Uh, well, David, you were the one who came up with this topic. 
So I'll kind of let you introduce it since, I mean, well, technically you already have, but kind of explain what your reasoning is. Okay. Um, my topic, I guess, for you, if you will, for today is, um, is RTS dead? Um, for those who don't know, RTS is real-time strategy game. Um, you know, strategy games have been out for a very, very long time. It's one of the first genres of video games out there. Um, you know, the strategy game used to be turn-based. Uh, so think Civilization, Sid Meier's, uh, you know, whole everything. collection of everything there. Exactly. Uh, and real-time strategy basically means everything's in the moment. There's no turning. It's you adapt on the fly as best as possible. Uh, everything happens at the at, in the moment. Uh, very famous strategy games like that are uh, StarCraft, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, Homeworld 2 is one of them. Um, uh, Age of Mythology, the whole Age of Empires uh, classic game series. I'm very upset they haven't come out with a new one in a very long time. They have come out with uh, HD remakes, just to let you know, Todd. Yeah, Homeworld 2 had a remake recently. Um I mean, we obviously Age of miss Empires too. Age of Empires as well. Um, Civilization, there's a new one every couple years. Um, yeah, Beyond Worth is actually pretty good, but it's still not an RTS. It's still a right. turn-based strategy uh, game. That, isn't, isn't there one of them that wasn't turn-based, though? One of the Civilizations? Nope. They've oh. always historically been that way. Now, you're thinking of some other ones, like... Um, I think you're thinking of Empire Earth, which was very That's similar. Of, yeah, yeah you're right. very similar, but it wasn't the same. Uh, it's made by a different company entirely. Oh. Um, but Hormo was a big one. One of my favorites actually was Warhammer 4000 Dawn of ah, War. Yeah, I remember that. Company of Heroes is considered a, uh, a real-time strategy game. Right. Um, Warcraft, obviously, not World of Warcraft, but Warcraft. The original Warcraft, exactly. First, the first Command three. And Conquer. Command and do Conquer. You know, do you know what a really fun three on Origin was? Was um, Lord of the Rings actually came out with two. It was uh, Battle for Middle Earth 1 and 2. Yes, I forgot about that. EA, they, EA <sighs> Games. So, which, ironically enough, this is when EA was kind of a crapshoot. Is they're like, is it going to be a good game? Probably not. No. This one happened to be a good game, though. It was, it so was right so the... it wasn't automatically a crappy game. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but anything with an EA badge is kind of kind of shitty at no. this point. Well, yeah, I, but yeah. that was also the era whenever they were using the James Bond license. Uh, that was like the Nightfire era. Oh, that was uh, so horrible. God. But and then they also made one right before or right after that that was great. I don't remember which one it is, but it's it was one of those and EA was the one that did it because the, the I think previous because holder, they literally all they did with that one was they they made a Pierce Brosnan Golden Eye and right. they reskinned it and they they remapped it and that's it. It's literally the same thing as Golden Eye for well, I mean, what was pre- it Xbox One or something like that? No, that was for the. Goldeneye was for... Oh, the original Xbox, I apologize. Yeah, that was... I mean, the previous holder was rare, and they kind of lost that at some point. But, uh, yeah, oh. EA Games at the time was a, a very hit or miss. If it wasn't a Need for Speed game, you had, like, no idea if it was going to be good or not. <laughs> Speaking of Need for Speed, uh, you know... Is there a real-time strategy game from a Need for Speed? No, unfortunately <laughs> not, oh. but I do miss it. Hot Pursuit. Shoot. Underground, bro. Underground series. <laughs> the most recent Most Wanted was really good as well. Eh. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. Eh. <laughs> I have high hopes for this new one, though. I have high hopes for this new one. Uh, and as far as the RTS stuff goes, I'm not going to say the genre is dead, because that is one of those genres that will always survive because there is a hardcore fan base that survives it. Granted, most of those people live in one country, and it's named Korea, and they all play StarCraft. Hey, but... speaking of StarCraft, uh, the new one comes out this November, Correct. Legacy of the Void. I am definitely getting the Collector's Edition, but everyone knows I'm the biggest Blizzard fan out there. Right. Yeah. But the, po- the good thing is, RTS's really did 
spinoff into a new genre that's just as popular, and we just talked about on the last episode. It's MOBAs. I mean, that's clearly the evolution of RTS is to make it for everyone. Yeah, I mean, but there's something fun about building buildings and creating resources and, you know, generally having a strategy to something versus, you know, kind of hoping you're going to get somebody and do team-based warfare. Right, but you got to think about it. Most people now get their fix of, I'm going to build stuff, build resources on their cell phone, on games like Clash of Clans or Boom Beach or that kind of shenanigans. Oh, gosh, yeah. Did I ever tell you guys... Uh, there, there was someone I talked to. I can't remember who this was. This is, this is actually an associate, uh, a coworker of one of yours at one point. He spent over $3,000 on Clash of Clans. Whoa. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, man, I can't remember who it is. It'll come back to me at some point. Oh, we can shame them on our later episode. Uh, <laughs> but, oh my gosh! But just just an aside, guys. Uh, if you spend three thousand dollars on uh, you know a mobile game, you have problems. Uh, yes, you probably need to get some help for that. I mean, um, yeah. I I I will. Microtransactions are a whole another discussion for another episode. But yes, good I think Lord. we should talk about that next time. I really okay. think we should. Next yes, time. it is. It is a big issue. Gotcha. So, uh, who did the next topic? Because yeah. that's, that sounds like something that I would write, but I didn't do that. Actually, I would I would have to admit that is me. Yeah. Um, All right, David. <laughs> I will let my inner perversion come out. It yeah. is the next topic, guys, is sex in video games. Why do we even bother? Why so, do why do we even bother with why them, why do publishers bother? Let me rephrase that. Why do the publishers bother? Why do game companies uh, bother with sex in video games? It's money. Um, sex sells. No, sex, not sex. really. Not yes. in video games. Yes. No, Controversy sells. Dude. Not actual not the actual sex of not the actual act of sex sells. Oh. I'm talking about well, yeah, sexual sexualization sells, absolutely. Um, look at the skyrocketing sales of Tomb Raider when it first came out. Uh, but I'm talking about like you know the god awful scenes that you've typically oh like get. the actual act of sex in exactly. video games exactly exactly oh, yeah, it's, it's bad it but- is horrible you can't you can't recreate that uh, like Hollywood can and that, I think that's what they're trying to do. What game is that that like got? Made fun of so much for their sex in the video. Oh, it was Mass Effect. Uh, it, no, well, Mass Effect was one of them, but oh, GTA Five or GTA uh, Los a- San Andreas. San Andre- don't San you call Andreas. Los Angeles tra- Sorry, trademark? San Andreas, the hot coffee mod. Yes, it's it didn't start at all, but it definitely brought it back into the limelight. Look, I well, think she oh, just oh. had a bad back, and he was trying to help her fix it. <laughs> hold, hold on, though. See, but that's not fair because you you weren't supposed to access hot coffee. Yes, that's true. you were. Yes, no. you were. No. no, the guy no. went on record stating that he put that in the code. He originally wanted to put it on there, but the only reason why they never kept it in there was so that way they can keep the mem rating and not go NC seventeen or adult only, because that would have been suicide for uh, Rockstar. Well, I mean, regardless or not, if it was in the code, it was like. For me, for instance, I don't know enough about going around, you know, game code and finding that kind of shit. But like to oh, the no. general public, it wasn't supposed to be there. So like to me, that's kind of eh, right. Not- well, the thing is, I'm trying to what I'm trying to point out though is that it was a it was supposed to be there. They had to remove it in order to keep it with it a certain rating right. in order to sell so- more. So what you're saying is is that they actually spent money on this. Yes, they did. <laughs> they developed this. Somebody had to spend time making literally the silliest looking animations in the world. Well, funny enough, they said it was art, um, and he felt sure. very violated about the fact that he couldn't put the art in there. I mean, um, sure, it's art. <laughs> mm-hmm, that's what that, I'm just saying. This is what it's. I've read. This is what it says on Wikipedia. So is my finger painting that I do whenever I was like. 22 or whatever. Don't worry about my finger painting age, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and as far as sex and video games go in general, it always looks awkward. 
But do you really want it to be realistic? That's the next I, question. I, I don't even think it should be a thing in most video games. It's just awkward. It's re- it's not right yet. It doesn't look like I even you know, if I'm going to try to play a sex game, I will buy an adult only game. I don't need it in as a part of the story. It's not necessary at all in my opinion. Um I mean, but at the same time, you got things like Sim City or Sims, and they're, 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 the ghosts are having sex and they're having babies. <laughs> ghost what, babies, yeah. Ghost babies. Yeah. What the <laughs> hell, Max is on that one? Um, you look, know, tell. Uh, uh, but look at it. Look at it. Ride to Hell is another game. It's a badass on. game, and they're, all on, their man. clothes are on the entire time. It's weird. Right, but it could be like, let's say, The Witcher. Who's pretty damn explicit? I don't. Okay. I don't know which side I'd rather have at this point. You know, but um, let me let me put it this way, and I'm probably gonna get yelled at about this. But <laughs> The Witcher made you work for it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> which is a whole another discussion about how like rescuing damsels equals getting some, but that's. Hey, like, well, no, Mass no, no, Effect no, taught us that. Dragon Mass- Age taught us that. Witcher Toe Two taught us that. What you just said is Bioware taught me that if I save <laughs> save a woman, I get to sleep with her. Oh, well, okay. Come <laughs> on. There's Wolfenstein. No, and by extension, well, well, that means EA taught me that well, because <laughs> Far Cry Three. Ubisoft. Okay, <laughs> continue. <laughs> Everyone's telling me that if I save a woman, I get to sleep with her. <laughs> Well, but you know, sometimes I, I feel like that it adds it add, it can add to the story in some degrees as long as long as it's not ridiculous. I mean, like, it added to the story that I knew that Kratos was a badass because he got three way in the oh, beginning of the game. Oh man, those Easter eggs, those fucking Easter eggs. Okay, what do you think, Kevin, about this? Um, so the games that you guys are talking about, I really haven't played very much or at all. It's because you're a uh, scrub. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I think it has its time and its place. Uh, if it's done artfully and well, I think it should be in there. Uh, but if it's done untastefully, <laughs> you know, like Grand Theft Auto Five, uh, for instance, yeah. you've got the strip club, and then you pay enough, <laughs> and then it does like a external scene outside the stripper's apartment. And it's like, oh, two seconds later, and then it's daytime, and you're, it's just. It's just like real life. It's yeah. <laughs> no, it, it really shouldn't be in there. Um, sometimes they no. do put it in, and on my side of things, you know, with kids and stuff like that nowadays in video games, it's a little off-putting. Uh, yes, definitely, especially in games that you and are like high titles that parents really don't give a shit about. Um, okay, buying for their parents, you know, or buying what? for the kids. Um. I think I think that's something we also need to talk about. That's definitely another topic about uh, game ratings and parents <laughs> buying it from <laughs> ESRB. I think, yes, ESRB. I think all four of us have plenty of experience with M-rated games and oh, yes. the legislation involved with that, the potential fines, Are you and how me? still no one gives a shit about it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but as far as wrapping this topic up, I guess, I mean... Sex in video games is always going to be awkward, but I really don't think we want it to approach the Uncanny Valley, where it becomes too realistic. That might be a problem. Yeah, um, I agree with Todd. I mean, Oculus Rift is coming out. Do you really oh, want that to happen? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I would not no. be surprised if Apparently, they don't do a virtual reality sex Oh, game. it's already no, done. No, it's, it's done. already done. There is a cardboard VR headset adapter. And the main reason why it's selling, I don't know if it's if it's being sold or if it was free, um, is because there's a there's a basically a Pornhub video app for it. Hell yeah! Oh see. no no! See, you're only touching upon the the seeing it. There's actually uh, a wireless uh, sex machine. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, there's there's been that stuff for years, but I, the I, internet. <laughs> right, internet rule <laughs> like, rule thirty four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, the whole gist for me is like I've definitely played game with sexual games with sexual content. In it. I mean, I I definitely played all of Mass Effect. I've played The Witcher, and I've also played games that were specifically of a sexual nature. But 
those games, thank God, did not actually show sex. They were it was a visual novel, which I've mentioned previously whenever I was streaming for Are We Not Entertained? Uh, and I'll bring it up again. I'm just going to tell you all to look it up. I'm not going to explain the game. Just look up Katawata Shunjo, and you will uh, regret yourself. Um, I take it from somebody who knows this from a personal <laughs> fact. Uh, he showed me. I wanted to gouge my eyes out. It, it's weird. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny, it will though. Challenge, it will challenge your sexual perception of the world. Let's just put it that way. And it will pull at your heartstrings. That was a night that I will not forget anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> that was a weird night. We, om- we almost killed Press Start Gaming before it even started. I, I think oh, I, not God. only that, but I think we all bonded in a very strange way. Oh, yeah. Well, and on that note. <laughs> Actually, you know, funny enough, um, speaking of what you're talking about, Todd, uh, a lot some of these games actually started out originally back in 1980 as the first uh, first game of its kind. It was text based, and it was called Soft Porn Adventure. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I'm not. Doing and that. it was on the Apple too. <laughs> there we go. Apple. What? It's important know, porn. Was it Bring Leisure to Suit home. Larry? Like also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that was, was Leisure that Suit was, Larry was back in the in the in the late '80s though. That's not Windows, the original. That's like Windows 3.1. That era. Uh no, it was uh, DOS, buddy. It oh, was, was it DOS? DOS? I mean, Leisure Suit Larry's been around forever since 1987, actually. But it didn't. It didn't really show anything. Thank God, if I remember right. Um, there was some of that didn't. There was some nudity did. in there. Yeah, there's definitely nudity um, in there. And then they obviously tried to revitalize it. What was that about? Ten years ago, they no. put out another one for the Xbox. Yeah, I believe that was nineteen. No, it was two thousand ten. I... Sorry, two thousand ten. Yeah. It was Leisure was Suit Larry. Uh, Summa Summa cum laude. Cum laude. There you go. I remember that now. I mean, and that was the era whenever they figured out like. We can put out M-rated games with boobs in it, and we get away with it. I'll be honest. I played a game called The Guy Game. Yep. You ever hear about that? I've heard of The Guy Game. I'm really good at trivia, and all it is is a trivia game. And if you answer enough questions right, you see boobs. Like It was my favorite game for a span of a month or two. I rented it at Blockbuster. That's it was ridiculous. at freaking Blockbuster. Did you conveniently <laughs> uh, forget to return it? Oh, no. I returned it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want no late fees, and then they'd be like, uh, "Do you have the guy game?" Shh, don't don't tell nobody. <laughs> you know, speaking of God of War, actually, it was one of the first games in in the year two thousand. After what twenty years of of sex and video games, to allow full frontal nudity. Yep, it had boobs. Sure yeah, did. that was, and they, and you know they. <laughs> And they kept including it in every subsequent yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, you have to. And then its game that was ripping off God of War also had boobs, Dante's Inferno. Well, you go to think about uh, it. For, for 1990 uh, forward, I mean, sex pretty much went away from consoles and computers. It it just wasn't, wasn't there except for, like, extremely adult-rated video games that you could only find in, you know, specific shops. CD back alleys. Or... I mean, the undertones of Super Mario Brothers, we all know that whenever they say he's a plumber, we all know what that means. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't want to know. Don't spo- don't ruin my childhood. <laughs> he, cle- he definitely cleans her pipes. Oh, my God. And he said it. Yeah, yep, he, he went Kevin, there. Yeah. Where, where is your that's what she said, man? Like, oh, I'm, sorry. I ruined it. Okay. <sighs> all righty. Um... That's about it of our main topics. Uh, anybody got anything else they want to talk about? Uh, well, I've got one go thing. Ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I've got Sorry. one thing real quick. I was reading an article the other day. Um, uh, Bethesda actually announced the uh, people that pre-ordered Wolfenstein get access to the alpha of Doom. So, um, wait, wait, I, they're remaking Doom again? I told you they're remaking Doom. I it's, played it's, it at Quake it's actually Doom 4, but yeah, they just call it yeah. Doom. It's 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 a it's not just remastered. It's completely redesigned from the ground up. I'm going to go a little bit into it because actually they um, two years ago at QuakeCon, like I said last uh, last time on the podcast, I attend and am part of QuakeCon. Uh, they did a secret like 
playthrough, as we would call it, just uh, just about a 10, 5 to 10 minute video of them doing a walkthrough of one of the levels during the campaign. Uh, the article I read was, um, I can't remember who it was or else I would shout it out. It was on Flipboard. Um, they were talking about it's only for the multiplayer. Uh, so they're going to test the multiplayer servers. And they're also going to test, they're going to have, th I think, three or six limited gun option categories. Uh, and you will be able to compete for a certain amount of time. You just go online to, to one of Bethesda's links and register with your pre-order beta code. Or it's actually an alpha pre-order code that you got with Wolfenstein. Um, the cool thing is, is actually at QuakeCon, I got to play Doom. Uh, oh. against the developers that oh. created the game. Which was one of the coolest things and one of the coolest experiences I will remember to my deathbed playing a video game against people that designed it. Um, yeah. And then later they came and played with us and gave us tips and tricks and it was so cool. It was the best experience I've ever had. Um, so is it ID still? Uh, it's Bethesda. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, Zenimax. Well, it's, it's, Zenimax it's, Media, yeah, Bethesda. It's, it's, it's all together. They're all one company. So, uh, <laughs> I guess I got a couple more questions. Um, is it still based in Mars? Uh, it is still based, yeah. I, I don't know if it's based directly in Mars. Um, it is still... It is, in, yeah. yeah. It is still in an outer space realm and all that stuff. Um, the, the weapons are, through the campaign that they showed two years ago through the walkthrough, were amazing. Uh, yeah. Chainsaw was there, shotgun, and even with talking with some of the people that designed it and developed it and um, Tim Shillett, I asked him, you know, what is the point in this? And he's like, we want to keep as original as possible to the front, to the, to Doom, and we still want to have that run and gun atmosphere. And I was like, dude, you guys did an awesome job. Because that's what it is, is run and gun. And that's See, what Doom 1 was. I didn't get that with Doom when I first played when I was a kid. It was more of a horror game for me. Well, yeah, that is, it, but it is still it still still today have that the new the new Doom does still have the scary aspect of things. The creatures look amazing. It's 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 so beautiful. I cannot wait for it. That's probably going to be my next like. Oh my god, I have to have this right now. Game. So follow up question. Uh -huh. Does it star Dwayne the Rock Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> Can you no. smell what the Rock is cooking? Hey, hey, oh he was God. he was probably the quintessential hate I this guy. I remember when that movie came out, and I was so excited, and then I watched it. I'm like, cool, first person <laughs> video. Let at, me barf. <laughs> at least, at least they did a video game esque style camera control yeah. at the very <laughs> end. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm very upset. Now that I said that, now I have to put that in the show notes and actually look at the trailer and stuff. Um, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I own Wolfenstein: The New yeah. Order. Does that mean I get this? You pre-order it. No, that's the no. You need to have the original like Wolfenstein PC. It came out like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So you're telling me I had to pre-order a game from. It a was year actually, ago? It was actually advertised, I believe. Yes. Yeah, it was. It was advertised with the Wolfenstein pre-order. Or uh. with, with or, pre-ordering Wolfenstein, it gave you alpha key to the... Uh, uh, it, I actually have the disc, the box right here. On the cover, it says, includes invite to Doom beta. Todd, um, you, you fucked up. Uh, I'm so sorry. Now, if you got it, if, now, Todd, if you got it day one, like they always do, it's inside there. Oh, well, I bought it on a Steam sale. So oh, well, that's you the know. Only reason I have <laughs> no. <it>. Well, <laughs> uh, mine okay. was a gift in the mail, so I ah. actually received it from uh, Bethesda, actually. Uh, they sent it to me. I'm Apparently. very curious about that, though, because I've owned Wolfenstein, and, like, I pre ordered it and all that other jazz through Steam. But I haven't gotten my key. Um, so... You might have to. I honestly don't know about that. You might have to go and register or something like that. This is why you go physical copy, guys. This is why you go physical no, copy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good without. Well, yeah. the problem is mine's for Xbox One. It's not for PC, so. That's what I'm saying. Physical copy, man. Well, I want to I wanna do the PC side, because that's what we played on at QuakeCon were PCs. And that's probably what I'm going to get this on. But, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I just, no, I can't do it. I'm excited I for it. I can't play a new Doom. I'm done. 
three was my last one. I'm done. Oh no, this was gonna be awesome. I'm gonna. I'm super excited. I can't wait. You know, I am. Uh, I am a little worried about this new Doom. I'll be honest with you. New Doom. It, it's going to be very, against very, very high expectations. I hope you... Or very, very low expectations, because Carmack is gone. Uh, yes, but if you guys look, they've been designing this for over three years. Right. It's been... You heard you, you hear the rumors of what they had to do. No, I did not hear the rumors, no. The, this, this is the second version. They actually had to scrap the first version. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm a little I'm a little worried and in, in Rage, which was their their last Ugh. game. Was, oh, Rage! That was yeah, yeah. That was not that um, good. No, it wasn't. Uh, I probably played like ten minutes of it and turned it off or it's uh, walked bad. Away. It was bad. It was yeah, but it was I, I give you guys props for at least giving it a chance. I didn't even bother. <laughs> they tried so hard to be Borderlands and just messed it up badly. Wasn't yeah. this before? For Borderlands, no. though? No, 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 no. no, no. Dear Lord, no. After it was after that. Um, Borderlands 1 came out, I want to say, five years ago? Four years ago? Rage was a couple years ago. Yeah, Rage was uh, three years ago, I believe. Three or four years ago, because they, they, that was the whole thing about QuakeCon, is they demoed it there. Um, but, yeah, po- yeah uh, Borderlands was way before Rage. I want to say two or three years before Rage. Borderlands was 2009, Rage was 2011. All day. Hey, two to three years. Hey, I said five years for Borderlands, I was right. I <laughs> thought I was pulling that number out of my ass. Alright, well, so, I guess Kevin's already said a kind of a game that he really wants, uh, as far as, like, stuff that's coming up. Is there any other games that you guys are excited about that's coming up? Call of Duty! Oh, get Fuck! Out. I hate I'm you. Kidding. I hate you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm done with you. you. Well, I already you... said I definitely um, am very happy about Legacy of the Void coming out. That's going to be the game right. I'm going to purchase. Uh, Fallout 4 is going to be a whole different topic that we're going to be talking about, but I'm very, very excited about that. It fucking I'll... came out of nowhere, too. Uh, I'm yes. going to do my... We're going to do a list of new releases in a second, but let's see. Which ones are important to me? Uh, Star Wars Battlefront. After playing the beta, I'm really into it. I'm ho- Which, sorry, I have to interject, but EA is doing no microtransactions in this game. Which which game? Star Wars uh, Battlefront. Battlefront. Uh-huh, that'll change. Yeah, no, that'll change. there's no way that'll they're change. not, because yeah, they never change. not. Because it's EA. They, they never do. not. I like that answer. They never <laughs> they not. They never not. Um, Fallout 4 obviously is coming out. I'm very hesitant, but want to try WWE 2K16. I need a wrestling game in my life. Uh, <laughs> uh, for some reason, Deadpool's coming out for the Xbox God. One again. Why don't you just play FIFA and get it over with? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, any other games you are excited for? Uh, there aren't that many video games out right coming out soon. Oh, Yoshi's World comes out tomorrow. I'm Yoshi's Woolly World. Yep. I'm excited about the Yoshi plushes. Uh, I'm probably gonna pick one of those up, even though I don't own a Nintendo. Uh, you Excellent. should totally pick me up one too. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're for. No. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yes, I yep. forgot about that. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be really good. I'm actually replaying it right now because it was free. It was free. The, the Tomb Raider, yeah, it was Tomb Raider was free for Xbox. Um, platform. it was also on a fairly decent sale on Steam recently, and I picked it up. I picked up the definitive edition there as well. Because yeah, guess I what? need the Tress effects. You 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 paid for it. We got it for free. I have both of them, so suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, All I right. remember. I remember trying to play Tomb Raider on my on my PC when that first came out. I enabled the hair effects. <laughs> the and it just, crashed your thing. Yeah, I it remember just, that. It just slowed all the way down. <laughs> that was back whenever... You had a 770, I think, at the time? No, that was no. a GTX 560. Oh, oh, no, that's right. You were a scrub back then. Okay. Um, wow. Let's see. Let's, let's just go through some quick releases, see if we got any opinions on any of these. Uh, I'll just do Xbox One, because that's the console we all have in common. Uh, Guitar Hero Live comes out. Don't no. Uh, Rock Band already came out. Like. Rock Band's already out, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adventure Time, Finn and Jake Investigations. Well, uh, I'm not a pothead. 
<laughs> Thank you for that bit of information, Kevin. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but Adventure Time is just... Uh, don't Retarded. get me started on that. Keep it, going, keep going. It, yeah, okay. go. I, I'm not gonna uh, just keep episode going to... Episode 5 of Tales from the Borderlands. Interested. Meh. Uh, I already own it, apparently, because I bought that Telltale pack last oh, year. shit, there's already five episodes? <laughs> yeah. I'm also, like, I'm also, like, four episodes behind on Game of Thrones, but that's not the point. Uh, Minecraft Story Mode, which is already out on PC, comes out next week for oh. uh, Xbox, um, which I'll probably be streaming on the uh, Press Start Gaming Twitch, most likely, okay. um, just because I get bored. Uh, Darksiders 2, Death- Definitive Edition. Uh, <laughs> also the 27th uh, WWE 2K16 uh, Halo 5 Guardians obviously mm-hmm. uh, Need for Speed a new Need for Speed can- is coming out oh, actually, so. I'm hoping that's going to be a good one supposedly it's a good throwback to uh, Underground and uh, Hot Pursuit unfortunately it will sell probably two copies because three days later Call of Duty Black Ops 3 comes out oh gosh <laughs> uh, also, oh, that's and, like and sadly release, enough I will probably get it Right, and then four days later after that, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Fallout 4 come out. Oh, oh my gosh. damn, I'm I'm going to be super broke. If Dude, you can't tell, yeah. we are hitting the holidays, because right after those two, uh, let's see, Star Wars Battlefront, yep, that's uh, a good Deadpool is reissued, I guess, for the Xbox One, Yeah, whatever, Rainbow Six Siege, Just Cause 3, um, let's see, um, my, oh my goodness, Mighty Number no. 9 is starting to creep up. Uh, the kick, the Kickstarter game from the creator of Mega Man is starting to slowly creep up to its release date. That's early next year, but I mean, man, it's coming. I'm uh, sorry, but didn't they like? Didn't the original Deadpool game like tank? Oh, it, yeah, oh, it was absolutely horrible. Okay, tanked. okay. I'm just making sure, like, it's not like a. Uh, but, oh my god! But this is the thing. With, this is the thing with Deadpool, though. That character is okay if it tanks. That is true, yes. So they just upscaled it, and they're like, oh, let me re-release it. Yeah, that was, um, and that somebody's going to buy really it. Fun. Right. That game was really fun. I'm not see, I, I didn't care for it. Yeah, um, let's see. Anything good on PC? Hey, Warhammer 40,000. Death Watch Enhanced Edition. There you go, David. Comes out next week. Uh, yeah, probably still going to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Nothing really. It's... We're, I guess they're all holding off until, uh, what the hell? Um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Knights of the Fallen Empire, releases on October 27th. I'm very confused now. Wait, what? Are you, wait, how oh, what? <laughs> right, that somehow slipped by me. Yeah, uh, seriously, um, wow. Okay, um, but moving on. Uh, yeah, a bunch of cool games coming out, uh, I'm not going to go over PS Vita because only three people in the world own that. <laughs> oh my gosh, every time I see one sold, it's just hysterical. Um, we still sell them somehow. Okay. I know. Uh, because it's going to be a in screen video controller like they did back with Dreamcast. Well, you can do remote play with it. That's the only cool thing is you can do remote play with it with your PS4. Another news story that we haven't talked about, but Fallout 4 uh, has Vita specific controls for uh, yes. remote play. Okay, that who, will be talked about in a later uh, I sold topic. <laughs> Kevin would be the person that would own one. Yeah. No, I sold it. Right. But... <laughs> I bought it because it was the Assassin's Creed Vita, and it was white, and it was the first handheld gaming console I bought, aside from a Nintendo, a Game Boy Advance. Ah, okay. Um, I did on, own the Kevin. original yes, PS sir. Vita, and then immediately sold it six months later because no games came out with it. Um. Uh, I think they still have the same amount of games as the original release. It has not gone anywhere. Yes, Jeff. So I'm just going to point something out about you, um, hmm? just, just so everyone knows. Kevin loves collecting stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, he does. Yeah, I kind of do. Uh, oh, how many Xboxes stuff? do you have? I, I did, no. Okay. Tree fitting. I have one <laughs> Xbox 360 for my personal use. We have another one at my parents' house that we use as a media server because my dad's hack no, – didn't hack. He got a TV tuner card for his desktop, so that's how we watch TV in the living room. So if you guys ever see me on Xbox Live, it's watching Media Center on the 360. Uh, I, have, I have an Xbox One and a PS4 and a PC, and I do also own a Nintendo DS. Now, granted, I bought the PS Vita – um, it was the special edition white. It was on Black Friday sale. I got suckered into it. Um, 
Mm. And it came with Assassin's Creed, I think it was Brotherhood or whatever came out for that. Gross. Um, it was absolutely atrocious. So I then sold it to a co-worker and got the Nintendo DS with, uh, DS XL, sorry, with, um, Pokemon X, Y, and Zelda. I just realized, I think I remember who you sold it to. Yes. Uh, not the point, though. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted a PS Vita. I was going to buy it whenever the, uh, Borderlands thing came out, but I kind of screwed off on it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, actually, I gotta, I gotta re say that I didn't even bother with the Vita because I bought the original PlayStation Portable. Oh, the PSP, yes, with the funky discs. Oh, God. Those discs UMD were cool. discs. Oh my gosh! I, I actually In paid the, the twenty five dollars for a couple of movies just and so the I could Sony watch them Pro on the road. Stick Two Duo. Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, I think that's wrapping it up for the night. We're probably <laughs> right at about the hour mark. So um, thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, again, I'm Jeff Stevens, and with me tonight is... I guess I'll go David Feldman. Kevin Nelson. Uh... They call me Todd every Todd. once in a while. I, I'm, I hear you. I'm just, I'm just done with this. I'm, I'm very <laughs> upset about Why? Halo. Why are you upset? I, I don't want Halo to come out because <laughs> people, people shouldn't have to buy that. It's confusing. Oh, okay. <laughs> then uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, that's that's pretty straightforward. You shoot each other. I'm done. Yeah. Um, I'm Todd Harden. Bye. Bye, guys. Good night, guys. Have a good night. 